contributors and do not necessarily reflect views of CAB Broadcasting LLC and its managements or its sponsors. Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Born to Shine being brought to you by Genius Kids. Very happy to be here. Um, this is our weekly show where Genius Kids spotlights young talent anywhere from ages 5 to 25 about something unique that they're doing. And when I talk about things that are unique, I'm not just talking about the academics. Academics are surely important, but not on this show. In this show, we want to meet people that are doing something different, especially when they're giving back to the community. And today I have with me two young ladies who are going to be sharing what they have decided to do to develop the love for literacy, which is one of my favorite subjects because Genius Kids loves to teach kids to read. In actual fact, at Genius Kids, we start them very young. And mm. our average age of reading, if I'm not mistaken now, is two years and three months old. So that's great. But on that note, let me first welcome my favorite RJ, Miss Ira. Hi, Miss Ira, how are you? Hi, Miss Reno, I'm good. I'm you know, very, very happy to be here. I love this show. Good. I Thank know. You. And I love your company too. And a special <laughs> thanks to Neeraj and Seba for giving this platform always for Genius Kids to be able to spotlight all the youth. So let's begin our show with two amazing young ladies. I'm going to have them actually introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about them. So I'm going to go in alphabetical order. I'll begin with Jill. Hi, Jill. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Good. And hi, Shri. How are you? Hi, I'm good. So let me see, are you guys local? Jill, do you live locally in the Bay Area? Yeah, we live in Fremont, California. Oh, Thanks right, now. my favorite city, Fremont, okay. <laughs> so Jill, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm Jill, I'm a junior at Washington High School. I love to read a lot. Uh, that's why we started this organization. Okay, so, um, and what, what do you aspire to be after school? After uh, school? I'm not 100% sure about this, but maybe a doctor or something in the field of biology. Okay, so you seem to, you're good at sciences? Uh, kind of. <laughs> Is anyone a doctor in the family that you've decided to go into medicine? Uh, kind of my mom. She works in the health field. She's not a doctor, but yeah. Okay, all right. And Mishriya, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, um, my name is Shriya. I'm a junior at Washington High School. Um, I love to read a lot too, and I... Oh, I think a computer is frozen. Um, ah, there you are, back again, yes. You love to read, and what do you aspire to be? Um, I'm not so sure yet, but I want to go into like a physics field right now. Physics, okay, so well, we the got sciences some, over here. Two smart cookies over here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, chemistry and physics were definitely not my subject, but I did pursue chemistry eventually, but... Um, that's great. Did you guys meet at high school or did you know each other when you were growing up as little preschoolers? Uh, we both went to the same elementary school and we've been friends since like elementary school. And oh, so that's great. Which elementary school did you go to in Fremont? Uh, we went to Parkmont Elementary. Okay, right in my backyard. I have so many students from Parkmont. In actual fact, probably most of the kids who graduate from my pre-K end up going to Parkmont from the Maori campus. So that's really wonderful. Great. I know so many teachers from there. So we, you mentioned something about reading, Jill. So mm -hmm. I, most people don't like to read anymore. I know I used to love to read when I was growing up, but now these kids like to read text messages on their phone rather than books. Um, so tell me, you started an organization. Tell me the whole reason behind this organization. Tell us a little bit about the name and, and why you started it. Yeah, so SLTC, our organization, stands for Spreading Literacy to Children. It's a mm -hmm. campaign that's focused on raising awareness about the devastating effects of illiteracy. And we also want to help children foster a love for reading and writing, in addition to providing learning materials to those who don't have access to them. Like you mentioned, kids nowadays, they don't love to read and write as much as me and Shreya did when we were younger. So hopefully our goal is to, you know, get kids back into that by spreading a little more about the importance of literacy. And we've also had workshops in the past where, we're, where we devoted time to getting children to love. So them. the organization is called S, what was it again? S S L T C. SLTC. So is it an official organization that you founded, like a 501, or is it just kind of unofficial, something that you guys have put together? Well, it was unofficial, but we're working on the paperwork to become a 501c3. 
Okay. And uh, so Shreya, uh, when you both sat down and decided to put this idea together, um, what was your vision of, because, you know, kids don't like to read and write anymore. I mean, they just don't. And I know teaching in our after school, the last thing they want to do is creative writing. Um, so what was your plan? I mean, how were you going to do this? Were you targeting only the underprivileged kids or was this for everyone? So we originally started off as uh, kind of like targeting everyone. We kind of wanted to get all children like internationally. And then we decided that we can also like hit other age groups, such as like teenagers, because carrying reading on, you know, throughout life is like, and kind of an interesting hobby and it's something fun you could do. And it helps with like the imagination and creativity. So we decided to like not only target younger children, but also t older kids as well. Um, but recently we were able to collect about a thousand books or so to donate to, to donate to like children, but we also collected like YA, which is generally like young adult books as well. So we could also donate it to kids who are a little bit older than elementary school students as well. So yeah. Okay, so are you so are you collecting material? I mean, how are you going to instill the love of reading? Because even if you collect material and you give it to somebody, how do you know they're actually going to read? I'll pose this question to you, Gio. Well, that's why we were looking to donate to elementary schools. We've been talking to librarians at local elementary schools, such as Maloney. And mm -hmm. what they do, they sort through the books and they collect books like that specifically target the students that they're going to be, that they're teaching. So that's how we're doing that. We're kind of leaving it up to people like librarians at that point. But that's also why we have other promotional activities, such as workshops. We had two workshops, actually. One of them was called Literacy 101, and the other one was called Canvassing Fem Books. Canvassing Fem Books was more targeted towards teenage females. We had a great turnout for that workshop, and we were able to discuss some great fem like titles with great feminists and great female leads. So I guess that's how we're targeting um, specific people and getting specific groups, our target market to get. So, um, so tell me a little bit about this group. I'm intrigued to know how you, what were you empowering women? How did you do it? You know, how did you get your word out there? What did you use to get your message out there, Shreya? So we mostly found um, books that were very centered around female characters who are very like strong where they go against certain like troubles that you know they have to face as women and we um talked to a bunch of like Jill said before um like teenage girls around our age who wanted to join and we kind of just discussed the book and discussed like feminism as like a whole and how these, these characters um, how like what they face still happens in our world as well. And so we were just, it was kind of like a discussion group as well. So it's like a book club. Yeah. Okay, good. And what about for children? You, what was your first workshop about? You mentioned there was a workshop called Literacy 101. What was that about? Well, that one was a little bit different. We had a bunch of guest authors that we met on Instagram and we formed connections with. And what they did, they talked about specific things that they were comfortable talking about. Mm -hmm. um, one, we had a poetry workshop, one about the importance of literacy, one about short story writing, one about creative writing. And the last one was again, centered um, towards feminism and empowering women in general. Okay, so, that's very interesting. I'm curious to know, um, what did your moms do to get you to love to read what do your moms and dads do to get you to love books i'm curious to know so the, hopefully the parents listening will also realize how important it is uh so i'll ask Shreya that how did your mom and dad get you to read books um so when we were little my parents used to take us to the fremont library a lot where we would just kind of get you know picture books and uh, my older sister she loves to read a lot so um they kind of like took her to the library first and then she inspired me to read a lot more. And I just, ever since I was small, like the fact that I kept going to the library and seeing so many interesting books and like worlds that were like on shelves, I just kind of wanted to, you know, keep reading and finding more about, you know, everything 
It was wonderful. And Jill, what about you? Well, similar to Shreya, my mom and dad, I remember they would take me to the library like once a week. I got my first library card when I was like four or six years old, very young, and I would just have the best time. I know the library has workshops and they'll be, they read to kids there. So I used to remember staying there and listening to other people telling their stories. And yeah, that's how I started to love to read. That's so wonderful. And for those who are tuning in, this is uh, Born to Shine. And we are talking to two young ladies today who are trying to develop the love for literacy, which I think is so important because it's slowly starting to fade away. Ever since the cell phone and the iPads have come, all kids want to do is just swipe left and right and play with cartoons and, 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 and they've forgotten the whole concept of reading an old traditional book, actually picking up a book and actually reading it. And I'm a big fan for books. I, I buy at least two or three books a week from Amazon. I mean, sometimes I don't even get to read them. And that's what we're doing today. And hopefully if you can tune in till the end of the show and learn more about this organization to support them. Miss Ira, I can see you nodding your head going, mm -hmm. do you like to read books, Miss Ira? It's a topic which is very close to my heart. And uh, yes, I love to read. I have a small little bookshelf, not something big. But one day I hope I, you know, have a house in which I have a library full of books. And I'm on the same page as you that you sometimes I haven't read all those books, but then, you know, more of a hoarder probably. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. You just cannot go wrong with the love of reading. I did have a question though, you know, when you say literacy, it's the ability to read and write. So now, where, so far we've spoken, you've told us about how you like to promote the love for reading. But what about, you know, I mean, do you also work with people who cannot read and write and, you know, get them there, get them to a stage where they are able to read and write, do the basics and then also, you know, read books maybe as a hobby? Like how, you know, you have illiterate people who are unable to read and write completely. So do you also work with them? Anybody well, with coronavirus, it's hard to reach everyone. But yeah. what we've been doing so far is, I think the first step towards like getting literacy for everyone is first of all, spreading awareness about the gaps in literacy mm -hmm. so that parents, like you mentioned before, could get their, can get their children to start reading early on. Additionally, that's why we're collecting a bunch of reading materials. So hopefully we can donate them to places where underprivileged kids don't have access to them because right. the first step to like build that foundation is having learning material. So that's how we're going to be doing Great. that. Great. And how, how long you've been, have you been doing this? How long is, how old is your organization? Uh, SLTC turned one years old last month. Oh, congratulations. So was this an idea that it was inspired during COVID when COVID started that you wanted to do something? Um, so we had this idea a little bit before COVID because we were just like talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, but it really just started like, we started like really working on it and working together on it like during Corona, like the, the like when it started. Well, I should hope that hopefully with Corona, I know a lot of people started cooking at home, <laughs> watching Netflix and movies. Hopefully they also started to read more books because they were actually sitting at home and now you don't spend as much out, you know, time commuting to work. So what's your next step, uh, Jill? What is your next plan of action to take your organization to the next level? And what help do you need from the community to be able to help you do that? Well, first of all, we want to hold another book drive. The last one we had was in October of 2020. It was like a book drive through where children, I mean, where families came to a local park and would drop off books. Like mm -hmm. Shreya mentioned before, we got over a thousand books, which we were really excited about. So we hope to do that again. And this time our goal would be 1,600 books, stepping it up a bit. And what everyone would, could do to help is, well, I know everyone has books around their house that they've already read or they ha don't use anymore. So it would be great if we could get them so we can donate them to kids who need them more than you do. Actually, that's a wonderful idea because, yeah, sometimes people have read books a couple of times and then they just put them away. And how do you get your message out, Shreya? How are you going to get this message out? I mean, social media, what other ways are you going to use? Yeah, so we usually use our Instagram and Facebook platforms to promote, you know, when we have our book drives. And we collaborate with other organizations that we follow or that we you know, usually communicate with. And we ask them to repost our, uh, like our, when we have our book drives or anything. And we have our friends who also li like 
live in our the same city as we do to post it on their story so we get it across you know wherever it gets to so people that's can... wonderful what's your instagram handle um it's just spreading literacy okay spreading literacy okay so um is and it, is the... it just the two of you or do you have other people also who are a part of your organization or your team and how can somebody join you if they would want to you know be a part of your initiative our team's definitely grown pretty big. We actually oh, nice. have five branches across the United States in wow. Dallas, Texas, wow. Orlando, Florida, and then we have three here in California in Fremont, Stockton, and Monterey County. Here in Fremont, we have a little team of five that kind of started at school because we made this organization into a club at school as well in hmm. order to gather more support. And if other people want to start their own branch, we can totally help anyone get started with that by contacting us through our email or Instagram wonderful yeah. okay so you're opening having little chapters open everywhere and then people can actually give back books within their own area as well that's a wonderful idea this is a superb idea of doing that now i'm curious to know how are you going to get kids to write so when you know hopefully when things start to open up a little bit more like locally what we were thinking about is probably getting in contact with certain libraries and stuff mm -hmm that we could hold workshops there and kind of just advertise the fact that we are going to be teaching them to write and stuff. So, uh, but that's locally and hopefully we can get it done in our other chapters as well. They do it wherever they're from. We can spread and create chapters in other places, maybe hopefully internationally as well, so that we kind of just, or they're able to hold their own workshops. And are these going to be like free workshops? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Oh, In case you're wondering, this is the Instagram. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Spreading literacy, it says. Okay, wonderful. Oh, my. I believe. <laughs> so fast. It would yes. have taken me a couple of times to even get that on my Instagram. I don't know how to log on my Instagram. It's you know, not very that's clear, what you but yeah. You need to have classes for grandmothers like me who can't <laughs> use Instagrams. Seriously. I mean, I didn't I mean, know what the Somebody asked me, what's your handle? And I could not understand what they were asking me when she said- Love what's handles. Your handle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got so, plenty of those. So, okay, good. Spreading so when, literacy, spreading uh, technical or social literacy for grandmoms, maybe, you know, the next uh, Instagram handle. But mm -hmm. listeners, again, at the rate, spreading literacy is the Instagram handle. So join them, like, you know, follow them on Instagram, show them the support. And also, if you'd like to- be a part of their organization or, you know, like uh, Jill and Shreya said, if you want to uh, open your own chapter, they can definitely help you set up, right? It's amazing. And I would actually encourage that because if you want yes. to keep your child busy and it's a great thing to have on your college resume, if you want to go to college and you're actually involved in an organization. So we have a few more minutes, Jill. So I'm curious to know, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? I'm always curious to know where young ladies want to be. Hmm. Well, hopefully still reading and hopefully with the organization, I hope that it grows a lot more and we can help a lot of young people continue to love reading and writing. Career-wise, um, I'm hoping I have it all figured out by then. Um, I'm not sure where I want to be exactly, but you know, just happy in reading is what I would say. Yes, you learn a lot. And literally, I mean, I can tell you, I put my entire concept of my company all from just ideas of books and things that I've done. So, um, Shreya, what about you, Missy? Where do you want to be? Um, so, like Jill said, I hopefully still reading and still with the organization. Hopefully it becomes bigger and a lot more people would, you know, join us. Um. Career-wise, I just hope that I do something that I love and that I'm interested in and that, um, that I'm just like, kind of like Jill said, like I have things figured out. So yeah. I'm sure you too young. If you can figure out an organization like this at such a young age, I'm sure you're going to figure out a lot more very quickly. Um, so we have a few more minutes. So I always like to know in closing, what would your message be, uh, Jill, to all our listeners and to the parents out there? What's your message? Well, to parents, um, hopefully when Corona is over, please, please, please take your kids to the library. It is such a fun place. And just reading is such a great thing. It opened up a whole new world for me when I was younger. Um, just, you know, reading fiction, it takes you into this whole different world. And to kids, all to all the kids out there, find a book you love. It's so worth it. Even today in high school, I love making time to read a good book. It's all 
in the future, it'll all be worth it. Absolutely. And you, Shreya, what's your message to all the listeners? Um, to the parents, uh, like Jill said, you know, take your kids to the library, to bookstores, wherever, just kind of let them pick whatever books they want. And they definitely will find their love for books somewhere in the shelves. And for kids, reading is a lot of fun. It, it's like a movie in your head. It's just, it, and it's like, you can imagine so much more. And, and it's, it's a really fun hobby. And you learn so much from books. That's yeah. right. And you know, you guys are too young to know. I'm not even sure if they have these books out, but I used to read Enid Blyton books. Do you remember I started, those? Years? It was my first novel, novel as such. But you know, <laughs> I'd like to say here something, Miss Renu. I know something yes. that Jill and Shreya said. I'd like to add to that. Uh, even if the, you know, even if you can't really go out to the library or to the bookstores, when I was little, my grandfather could not see, okay? Um, he lost his vision later in life and he would just make me stand or, you know, just be around him and read anything like a newspaper or any magazine, just out loud. He would say, just read and let me hear how you're reading. And of course, with that, he would also correct my pronunciation and everything. But you don't really, my point here is you don't really have to go somewhere to start reading. You can just start Correct. reading anything. Even now, if I go back home and if I'm just cleaning my, you know, Almira and everything, I just pick up old newspapers and start reading. Forget Correct. about the cleaning. So, you know, you can just pick up anything and start reading is what I'd say. Absolutely. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, Ira, forget uh, Corona, putting Corona aside, one of the best ways to bond with your child and develop their communication skills and their confidence as well as their listening skills is to actually read to them and then have them read back to you. Yes. Ladies, it's been wonderful having you on our show. Thank you so much for writing in and telling us about what you do. And anyone out there, if you feel you're doing something different like Jeel and Shreya, then you need to write to me at renud at gmail.com. We'd love to have you on our show. We want to spotlight those that are doing something different, especially if they're giving back to the community. So yes, if you're getting 100% in your math, that's great, but you don't need to call me for that one. I need to know <laughs> if you're actually doing something good and something that's unique. So thank you very much, Jeel. Thank you, Shreya. And of course, thank you, Miss Ira, for always being here on our show. Thank you, Mr. Renu. One of my favorite shows, uh, you know, one of my favorite episodes of this show, I would say, uh, you know, uh, very, very close to my heart. And thank you. And listeners, again, if you think you're born to shine or if you know someone who's born to shine, send an email to Ms. Renu, R-E-N-N-U, Renu, D at gmail.com. Ira signing off and I'll see you next week, Ms. Renu. And thank you so good much. luck, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you're you. Fun. Yes, thank you.